Hello and welcome to another video review. This is Samurai Showdown 5 Special for Neo Geo. This is a 2D fighting game developed by Yuki Enterprise and published by SNK Playmore in April of 2004 for arcades, and then it later saw a release as the last official Neo Geo game for home console version, I mean. And as the name implies, it is a remake or really an upgrade of Samurai Showdown 5, which is also known as Samurai Spirits Zero. And the reason for that is something I'll get to more when I get to the plot part of this. But suffice to say, this thing hit the market and didn't really get that great of a reception. Although to be fair, the original Samurai Showdown 5 didn't really get that great of a reception either. And while they were generally considered pretty decent games overall, the, when you're following up Samurai Showdown 4, let's face it, that's a really hard act to follow and they did all the wrong things with Samurai Showdown 5 and tried to fix some of that in 5 Special but with some mixed results that I'll get to more in a moment. Now before I really delve into this review proper I do need to mention a few things to you. First off, the footage you are seeing has been stretched from the original 4x3 resolution footage to fit the 16x9 aspect ratio for YouTube viewing. So please bear in mind that this thing was originally made for a 4x3 resolution in an arcade cabinet. Second thing, I am pretty terrible at this game. Don't expect masterful gameplay of any kind. While I am better at this than I am at Samurai Showdown 2, I'm still pretty terrible at it. So with all that in mind, let's go ahead and delve right into this thing and find out what makes Samurai Showdown 5 special tick, and I guess technically Samurai Showdown 5 by comparison's sake. Now as far as presentation goes, first off, yes this is a 2D fighting game, but it was released in 2004 and it was an update of a game that was released in 2003, which itself was built on an engine and sprite work from a game that was released in 1996. So it was looking really dated when it came out, and even though that's not as big of a problem in a 2D fighting game, it doesn't really do the game any favors, and especially by the time you get to Samurai Showdown 5 Special, with a lot of the sprite work from Samurai Showdown 3 even being reused, well, let's just say it's a good thing that the sprite work for Samurai Showdown 3 and 4 was very high quality, because this thing was starting to look fairly archaic by the time it came out. And the funny part about that, this wasn't even the last game to use those sprites. So talk about reuse up the wazoo. At any rate, this thing is sort of a mixture of the previous three games in terms of its art style, Namely, the more dark art style and dark atmosphere that Samurai Showdown 3 had mixed with the elements of Samurai Showdown 4 and 5 that were just pretty much continuations of what you saw with the um, Samurai Showdown 3 art style. So while there are certainly dark elements to the art, most of it's pretty bright and colorful and has quite a lot of charm to it even though it is certainly looking fairly dated by the time it came out and certainly by today's standards. Similarly, the sound design was plagued with a lot of reuse. Now, some of that's perfectly fine. I mean, sound effects, you don't really expect them to change all that much when they fit this game to a T. But the sound quality certainly could have been a bit better, and it doesn't really do the game any favors. The voice acting is still about as good as you would expect after having seen previous Samurai Showdown games. Once again, it is all in Japanese, but of course, that fits and it all works very well. The music is pretty much what you would expect from Samurai Showdown as well, featuring a lot of traditional Japanese sounds mixed in with some more modern stuff like rock or pop music. And it still serves the game well despite the sound quality not quite being as good as it could have been if it were on, say, not the Neo Geo. But in spite of it all working rather well, you can't help but feel like they played it really safe with this. You feel like there's a lot of reuse, and not a lot of new stuff to really try to compensate for that. But the presentation being rather dated isn't really enough to make or break this thing. What really matter here are the story and the gameplay. And like in previous Samurai Showdown games, this is pretty light on story. The basic idea from what I can tell after having played the game and looked up information to try to expand what I know about the story, it's actually a prequel to the entirety of the Samurai Showdown series, hence the Japanese name Samurai Spirits Zero. But there's really not much in the way of plot here. The basic premise is that all 28 of the various warriors who are going up against each other are doing it because reasons. 
Or I should say Destiny, because of course there's barely any plot to this thing. Luckily, this isn't really about the plot, it's about the gameplay, because it's a 2D fighting game, and generally speaking, 2D fighting games and fighting games in general are pretty light on story and very heavy on gameplay. This is where the game really does both shine and kind of fall flat on its face sometimes. It does feature a pretty wide roster of characters, including most of the characters from the previous Samurai Showdown games, but not quite all of them. For example, Gen'on is still not in this thing after having not been in a Samurai Showdown game since SS2. But the vast majority of the series' favorites, for example, Haomaru, Ukyo, Hanzo, Nakoruru, Genjiro, Kyoshiro, etc. do make a return in 5 Special. And they're joined by a new cast of characters, several of which were designed by Nobuhiro Watsuki, who you may know from Aroni Kenshin. And if you don't know about Aroni Kenshin, then that's pretty sad, and you should know that it's my favorite anime series of all time, at least until you get to the third season. But that's beside the point. Some of the new characters do fit in pretty well, like Yunfei and Yoshitora. And then there's the couple of characters who fit in to some degree, but not quite as well as, say, Yoshitora and Yunfei, like, for example, Mina Majikina and Reda. But then there's Kusaragero. Whoever thought that that gigantic mound of demon bullshit should be thrown into a Samurai Showdown game should be smacked in the face with a fish. He's hideous, he is ridiculous, and above all, he does not remotely fit in with Samurai Showdown. Now with that mini rant out of the way, let's actually talk about how the game plays. If you've played previous Samurai Showdown games, particularly since Samurai Showdown 3, this is going to feel very familiar to you except for one glaring omission, which is the slash or bust system. Basically, in Samurai Showdown 3, they introduced the idea of playing a character with two different variations. You had the slash version and you had the bust version, and they had different special moves and such like that. This continued with Samurai Showdown 4, but they removed it with 5. And instead of having a slash or bust system, what they basically ended up doing was introducing alternate variations of characters as the slash and bust versions. For example, Reira is actually the bust version of Nakaruru from uh, Samurai Showdown 4, basically just made as a separate character. So right off the bat, it commits something that isn't necessarily intuitive and not necessarily the best idea, although it certainly could have been a hell of a lot worse, let's put it that way. The core fighting game experience is still pretty much that of Samurai Showdown 3 and 4, only with some slight tweaks here and there, mostly with regards to some slight tweaks to the game's speed being a bit faster than the previous Samurai Showdown games, and the control scheme being a bit more simplified. And while it is a good thing that the core gameplay experience of Samurai Showdown 3 and 4 remains mostly intact here, it feels more like a mashup of those two games than a full-on sequel and that doesn't really do the game any favors. But there was one thing that Samurai Showdown 5 did that really upset most of the fans, and that was the complete removal of fatalities of any kind. While the game still did have blood spurts in it, you couldn't slash your opponents apart like you could in the previous games, and people really didn't like that change. So one of the things they did with 5 Special was reintroduce that, and not only did they reintroduce it, they actually expanded upon it, introducing something called a Zetsume Ogi, which is something you can only pull off in certain circumstances, but when you do pull it off, it instantly kills your opponent with a very flashy fatality move that is dedicated, instead of simply being, oh, you hit the opponent hard enough that they slide apart it from shoulder to hip, or they have a huge blood spray out of them before they just collapse or something like that. And some of these moves are better than others, and some of them are more gruesome than others. In particular, Sogetsu has a fairly ridiculously over-the-top one where he makes the other character levitate, and then suddenly it starts raining blood down upon him. Although I'm more partial to ones like Jubei's, where he just does a bunch of slashes and then the opponent splits into four parts. Because, let's face it, that's just immensely satisfying. But they also messed with the normal fatalities, the ones where the, you just slash the opponent hard enough that they actually cut apart or something like that, and introduced a vertical split where you actually chop them in half from the top of their head down to their uh, pelvis, 
and it just drenches your character in blood and they split apart. So 5 Special is definitely more gruesome than what we're used to in the 2D variants of the Samurai Showdown series. And in some ways it works, in other ways it doesn't. I mean, I've always felt like the fatality stuff in the previous Samurai Showdown games was pretty classy about the way it handled it. It wasn't really gory or gruesome, it was just kind of a nice finisher, like a, hey, you cut the opponent in half, it's really cartoony, there's, I mean, sure there's blood, but there's no real gore-gore in it. And then you get to this one and it basically has Mortal Kombat-esque fatalities in it. It's just kind of a weird change, and while it wasn't quite as bad as the gore in Samurai Showdown Sen, it's really hit or miss, and some people really don't like that you can actually now apply those particularly gruesome fatality moves to Nakaoru and Rimururu, where in Samurai Showdown 4 they were actually immune to it. But of course your mileage may vary on that. If you didn't really care one way or the other about the fatality stuff in the previous Samurai Showdown games, you probably won't care about it in this one. And if you're like me and you thought it was a nice touch, but that they probably should have kept it classy, then some of the moves are going to be better than others. So maybe they overreacted to the fan backlash against not having fatalities at all in Samurai Showdown 5, but I can take it or leave it, really. It's just kind of an aesthetic thing rather than something that really makes or breaks the game. Although it is nice to have the Zetsume Ogi in there if you do manage to pull it off, because you do actually have a chance to block it and prevent the opponent from doing it and thus ending the fight immediately. But normally by the time you're about to pull off a Zetsume Ogi, the fight's almost over anyway, and it's more of just a flamboyant finish than anything else. So with regards to the actual combat mechanics, you have a meter that actually builds up just by not doing anything thing and when it's at the maximum you do more damage when it's at the uh, minimum you don't really do much damage at all and it's pretty much there to make sure the player paces themselves rather than just goes all out on trying to do combos and constantly attacking and instead make sure they go into this thing with the mindset of a samurai showdown player which is to be more slow and methodical although this is faster than the previous games it's not that much faster and it's still a much slower gameplay experience than the vast majority of fighting games out there simply because it's a more lethal fighting game than most of them out there you can do an awful lot of damage with a single attack i mean gaira's uh grapple that swings the opponent around move can just completely decimate your health meter if you actually let him do it, and it's pretty infuriating if he does. So the name of the game is really to be more careful, wait for a good opening, try to be quick and precise as opposed to just trying to drum up combos like you would in pretty much any other fighting game out there. And on that level, it generally succeeds rather well. It feels like a Samurai Showdown game. It just feels like a mashup of 3 and 4 more than anything else. And that's not necessarily a good thing, because it does feel like it's just more of a rehash than a full-on sequel, as I've mentioned before. But one thing that does drive me crazy about this game is how cheap some of the characters are. Mina Majikina, for example, is an archer. Now while that fits in beautifully with the whole samurai aesthetic, because samurai used bows up the wazoo, it was actually one of their three primary weapons, the other one being the yari, which is a spear, and the katana. So while she fits in brilliantly from that design standpoint, unfortunately, she's an archer fighting melee characters. Can you see where that can become a problem? She's actually pretty ridiculously overpowered if you know how to use her. And even if you don't know how to use her, pretty much all of her attacks are projectile based. So she can pretty much wipe the floor with anyone. And it's pretty infuriating. So the game does suffer from some balancing issues, but that's really its only major downfall in the gameplay department, other than just feeling like more of the same, just not quite as good as Samurai Showdown 4. It's still a good fighting game, don't get me wrong, and there's certainly far worse options out there, but it's really more of a hit or miss kind of game among people who have played the Samurai Showdown series. Some people really hate it, some people just are ambivalent toward it, and then there's people like me who enjoy the hell out of it. Now don't get me wrong, it's not as good as Samurai Showdown 4, or even Samurai Showdown 3 for that matter. But oddly enough, it's the one I have the most fun with. 
Now, that doesn't affect the end score of this review, but it should be noted this is my favorite game in the Samurai Shodown series, on a purely personal level. Maybe it's that whole mashup idea, but it seems to take most of what I really enjoyed about previous Samurai Showdown games and blends it all together in a game with a large cast of characters, most of which I actually like playing, oddly enough and it all just works as far as I'm concerned. Not that the game doesn't have issues, it certainly does have issues, and it's certainly not the best game in the series by any stretch of the imagination. But if you do get the chance to play it, it's quite a lot of fun. Especially if you've liked previous Samurai Showdown games, you'll probably find at least something to like about it. It's just that it had a really hard act to follow, and they played it a bit too safe in a lot of ways. So is it deserving of a fairly mixed reception? Sure it is. It's still a good game, it's still well worth playing, but just keep in mind when you go into this thing, if you've played Samurai Showdown 3 and 4 in particular, temper your expectations a bit. I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Thanks for watching.